first and foremost, I'd like to know how cryptocurrencies are perceived in the U.S. Uh, more so, Korean authorities have a very negative view on cryptocurrencies because of instability or something else. They are right. doubtful. How do people, especially regulators in the U.S., think of cryptocurrencies? I, I think you know here it's very complicated, but in the U.S. it's you know, pretty complicated as well too. You know, SEC is saying that it might be a security, it might not be a security. IRS saying it's a, it's a property, and you know uh, there's no like one specific organization that has all the power. You know, the more time passes by, uh, it's been really good to see that cryptocurrencies are being um, more adopted by the regular people, um, just because. You know, we first started storing back in 2014, yes. and it was right after Hong Kong's and Silk Road, and everyone thought it was a scam okay. because uh, people were using it to buy drugs. Right. Right? Can you share some stories when you first started BitMaker? Uh, stories behind the scene because, yeah. uh, as you know, as you said, crypto market in back in 2014 was not pretty. Yeah, yeah. So, um, how did you find the chance in such a crisis? Yeah, so uh, my last job, I was in banking, so mm -hmm. I was working at a commercial bank mm -hmm. uh, doing risk analysis for uh, middle market companies. Mm -hmm. So my job was to look at uh, companies' financials and to see if we can make loans. Mm -hmm. And uh, what I was really interested in was I saw a lot of fees happening, like billions of dollars in bank fees that happened on like, a yearly basis just from one bank. And then, you know, what? When Bitcoin kept coming on the news, um, I got really interested. Uh, it was always for the bad news, but um, I started looking at the white paper and looking at technology, and I thought, wow, the fees are going to be zero. Mm -hmm. Like This is going to be just an amazing opportunity. Um, I met my co-founder, Calvin, who was building this application. So uh, originally, I thought it was very stupid. You, know, you have to you have to earn five times in order to get one cent. So Shiba, like, five oh, times, okay. so, like, it's very, it's very small amounts mm -hmm. of money. And I thought, you know, who's going to use this and actually spend time to earn that small amount of money? Um, but then I, I looked at the user metrics and uh, the application was going very quickly. And so one of the lessons that we learned quickly was that it was right after Bitcoin crashed from like 1200 to, you know, like 200 or 300 left right away. And people were still very interested in technology, but they didn't want to risk their money buying it because the crash happened so fast. It's kind of like now, yes. right? So like people are a little bit scared, but yeah. they hear about Bitcoin and every time it jumps up, they get excited. And so they wanted to find a way to earn you know, Bitcoin easily through our application. But, so that's how we first you know, started to think, you know, continue evolving. But the real awesome technology that we were able to create though was we were able to send payments to anywhere across the world for like almost zero fees. And that's, that's the first time it's ever happened. As a small company, like even smaller than now, we were able to send you know one to two cents mm -hmm. to someone in India or China. Like you can't do that with traditional banks. Yes. There's wire transfer fees, foreign transaction fees. Mm -hmm. uh, there's all these different fees that are associated with it. It costs like hundred dollars. And so then, you know, we thought, okay, users love coming to our app. How can we increase the earning opportunity mm -hmm. so people can earn like a living wage on the application itself? So I'd like to know the source of momentum of transition mm -hmm. from app simple ad platform to microtasking platform. It was yeah. quite interesting. Yeah, the microtasking, we're to evolve right now as well. The definition of microtask is you're earning money, yeah. but it's like very small amounts mm -hmm. of money, right? And so we've been able to do that with the ad tech platform, so that you work with different companies like Uber and Airbnb, and reward which is money, but uh, it, it doesn't make like too big, big of an impact for earning like mm -hmm. Sanchon and Sanchon yeah. somewhere like nearby, but um, here or in you know, the US, it might not be very significant, but in you know emerging countries like Indonesia or India, like yeah. lots of people mm -hmm. across the world, that it is a big uh, mm -hmm. opportunity yeah. for over a billion people across mm -hmm. the world. And one of the interesting parts of blockchain is you don't need a bank account. So if you just have a wallet account, that's all you need to do to set up. So one of the fastest growing regions is Venezuela. And it's because you know, the currency keeps inflating like crazy. People are literally throwing cash on the streets. So how can we create uh, a better opportunity for people to be able to earn? And until now, microtransactions was not effective because it costs so much money to send it. But um, because of blockchain technology, we're able to remove the friction and really be able to focus on that. Um, so we started with microtransactions, we're continuing to grow it, but overall, we'd like to add uh, macro transactions as well too, so people can actually, wherever you are, make a meaningful income. Mm -hmm.
that's very inspiring. Yeah. This might come a little bit straightforward, but this is the question that I'm most curious about. Storm has a really great, you know, purpose of familiarizing blockchain technology throughout the world. Yeah. Mm, to target many users, mm -hmm. but Evans is like Amazon, they already enter in the PP economy, right? Yeah, um, we're, we're definitely seeing a shift, and mm -hmm. the fact that JP Morgan, mm -hmm. Facebook, and Amazon, and Microsoft, all these yeah. companies are building blockchain, mm -hmm. to me that's exciting because then it creates more opportunities for small companies. I think what's ultimately going to happen for a lot of the early mover advantages mm -hmm. is they're going to be acquired or they're going to be working mm -hmm. with the larger mm -hmm. company because. The larger companies are very interested in technology. Like even us, um, you know, since what we created, like I don't, I don't think a lot of the banks have the ability to be able to send money like, you know, as efficiently as we can. So we have built some really amazing technology. You know, whether it's Storm or a company, I think you know, there will be interest as long as the technology keeps evolving. For because for larger companies to acquire, you know, for seven hundred million dollars or uh, you know billions of dollars, it's, it's a very yeah. it's a small fraction for a much larger game that they. Play. And ultimately, larger companies coming in will be able to really help with mass adoption because they have the more resources and then fuel with the good technology and continue to evolve, right? So, I mean, even look at all the um, like traditional things like Skype was really yes. one of the big things that helped mm -hmm. us lower uh, calling fees mm -hmm. across the world, but even they were acquired by Microsoft, mm -hmm. right? So they created a viral application, people use it all over the world, but when Microsoft acquired them, like they helped us like the same thing. Mm -hmm. Them. Like just, it, it's going to be a very similar cycle, and the, the speed of how the large companies came in was a really good sign to see. Because typically, when new technology like this comes, it takes a long time before um, you have companies like Fidelity coming in because these guys can be very slow. But Fidelity and even you know, um, just Walmart coming into blockchain technology is something that's very interesting to see. So.